You might be familiar with the phrase, beauty comes at a price. Whether that be spending large amounts of money on makeup products, exposing yourself to harmful chemicals, or doing anything you can to lose a couple of pounds, beauty is a costly affair indeed. But perhaps no one in the course of history knew this better than the women of Victorian England. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Historodame, and today we're discussing the dangerous world of Victorian beauty products. There's arguably no woman of the Victorian period more influential than Queen Victoria herself. In those times, the attitudes of the reigning monarch usually influence the attitudes of society as a whole, meaning that what the Queen says goes. This included Her Majesty's opinion on makeup, which she viewed as promiscuous and something only for performers and prostitutes. Instead of using makeup, a woman was encouraged to flaunt her natural beauty. The beauty ideal of the Victorian era was modeled after someone suffering from consumption, also known as tuberculosis. Because nothing says sexy quite like coughing blood into a handkerchief and dying a slow death. The Victorians had a fascination with death, and often romanticized the disease that was so prominent during the era. This included having a pure, natural face that was free of any marks or blemishes, skin so pale it was almost translucent, rosy cheeks, berry red lips, dilated eyes, and a frail figure, all traits common in those with consumption. But if makeup is frowned upon, how can a woman achieve that hot, new, diseased look that all the men were into? The short answer is, you need to get sneaky with it. Since it was taboo to discuss makeup in public, a respectable woman would have to purchase many makeup and beauty products in secret, or concoct a recipe of her own. This was before any official testing was done on makeup to see if it was safe for use, so many of these products sported false advertising or contained harmful ingredients that could cause a myriad of side effects and even death. But even though beauty came with a price, there were many women that were still willing to pay it if it meant that they could achieve that much sought after look of the time, and they had a whole lineup of dangerous products in their arsenal to do that with. So you're a woman in the mid to late 1800s, and you're ready to spruce up your appearance to get that sweet, sweet dying of consumption look. The first thing you need to worry about is making your skin pale, because you don't want anyone to confuse you for a peasant by having a tan. Then you want to cover any and all blemishes. This was done with face powder, which was applied to the face, neck, and arms, with a puff made from things like swan's down or rabbit fur. Powders could be purchased or made from scratch, with various pulverized ingredients including starch, oatmeal, flour, zinc oxide, chalk, and white clay. Many of these products also contained things like bleach, arsenic, or white lead, all of which could have disastrous side effects if used in large quantities or over a long period of time. Another product that women used to improve their complexion was cold cream, which was a facial cream that consisted of water, oil, emulsifier, and a thickening agent, which was a staple in a woman's beauty routine. Cold cream was believed to be beneficial for cleansing skin and moisturizing, making it essential for a woman that wanted to achieve very soft, very delicate skin. It was actually one of the few products in the Victorian era that was generally safe for use, and was not frowned upon socially. But if face powder and cold cream wasn't enough, some women turned to arsenic wafers. Dr. James P. Campbell's Safe Arsenic Complexion Wafers were most definitely not safe, despite what the product name is trying to tell you. This product promised to improve skin imperfections such as freckles, pimples, and redness, and also make women look younger and therefore more attractive. However, as clearly stated in the product name, these wafers contained arsenic, which was poisonous. Prolonged use of these arsenic products could cause side effects such as anemia, painful headaches, and vomiting or worst of all, open sores on your skin, which was a far cry from the ideal complexion. What is even more unfortunate is that arsenic was already widely known to be poisonous and addictive during the Victorian era, yet women used these products anyway in order to achieve this ideal of beauty. Dilated eyes were another result of tuberculosis that was seen as a sign of beauty. A dilated eye was attractive, but also a sign of desire, so it could make a woman appear more alluring to a potential partner. In order to achieve this look, women would use eye drops made from belladonna to dilate their pupils. 
The belladonna plant is one of the most poisonous plants in existence, and consuming an amount as small as a single leaf can cause death. Using these eye drops could have some nasty side effects from dry mouth and headaches, all the way to seizures or death if consumed accidentally. In smaller amounts, this poison could cause rashes, swelling, digestive trouble, and even blindness. Like arsenic, it was common knowledge for the people of Victorian England that belladonna was a highly poisonous plant. Yet they continued to use these products despite the risk. Even the modest Queen Victoria used belladonna eye drops as a treatment for her cataracts. Though not a cure for her condition, her eyesight still improved because her pupils were dilated, so she continued to use the drug throughout her life. So you have your toxic face powder and your poisonous eye drops, but you're not done yet because you need people to think that you're dying, and you don't look thin enough. Luckily for you, the corset has you covered. Corsets were a staple in Victorian women's fashion. Women of every class and age would wear corsets, even if they were pregnant, to give them a thin waist and an hourglass figure. This era saw the introduction of metal eyelets to be used in corset making, which were then used to reinforce the corset's lacing and allowed the garment to be laced tighter without damaging the fabric, thus making the waist smaller. Some women even partook in the trend known as tight lacing, where their corsets were laced tighter than normal in order to give them a slimmer figure. While there is some debate amongst historians of what specific range of circumference qualifies as tight lacing, it was generally defined as the reduction of the waist by a measurement of 3 to 10 inches. For example, a natural waist of 27 inches might be reduced to a circumference of anywhere between 24 to 17 inches, though a waist size measuring less than 20 inches was incredibly rare. Prolonged use of the corset, however, could cause various health consequences. Wearing a tightly laced corset on its own could make a woman unable to draw deep breaths and cause frequent fainting spells. It could also cause problems with digestion. More disturbing, wearing a corset over many years in one's life could cause permanent damage such as warping the shape of the ribcage or causing internal organs to shift positions. That being said, some historians have argued that the dangers didn't necessarily cause a shorter lifespan or a large detriment to a woman's health. While many skeletons examined have been affected by long-term corset use, many of these women lived long and healthy lives, or at least as healthy as you could in that time. Without a doubt, the most infamous beauty product of the Victorian age is the dreaded tapeworm pill. Though corsets allowed women to make their waist slimmer, some women had other ways to get thin. In the late 19th century, some advertisements emerged showcasing a new way to lose weight, sanitized tapeworm pills. This, unfortunately, is exactly what it sounds like. Someone would swallow a pill containing tapeworm eggs, and then the parasite would grow inside them. The idea behind this was that the tapeworm would consume part of whatever their host ate, which allowed women to eat whatever they wanted without fear of gaining weight. But once you've gotten to your desired weight, ridding the body of that tapeworm is not as easy as contracting it. One such method of tapeworm removal created by Dr. Myers of Sheffield was a device that inserted a cylinder with food through the throat and into the digestive system in order to lure out the tapeworm. Once captured by the device, the tapeworm would then be pulled out through the mouth. As you can imagine, this was risky and incredibly invasive for the patient, and many people choked to death before the tapeworm was successfully removed. Another prescribed cure suggested holding a glass of milk at the end of one orifice and waiting for the tapeworm to come out on its own. It is debated if this method was actually proven to be effective. Some historians disagree on whether these tapeworm pills actually contained any tapeworms at all, or were simply a placebo meant to steal the money of desperate people. But whether they were fake or not, this does not change the fact that real people bought and swallowed them in hopes of growing a tapeworm inside them. In the end, however, whether you were swallowing tapeworm pills or caking your face with arsenic-laced makeup, beauty in Victorian England came with a cost. Many women knew the dangers that they put themselves in for the sake of beauty, and though many products are safer today, people will still pay astronomical costs if it means that they get to be considered beautiful. I suppose the question to leave you with is, was it worth it? Hey everyone, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like or a comment down below. 
If you want to see more content like this, you can also subscribe to my channel and keep up to date on all the fun history videos of the future. But for now, I bid you farewell.